Let's talk about homeschooling the sixth grade. Today I want to give you not only my curriculum picks for my sixth grader, but also like his entire homeschooling plan for the year 2022-2023. I'm going to share with you everything that I plan on using, the co-op classes he's going to take, and how I'm breaking up the homeschool year. Hey guys, it's Bonnie from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, I make videos to help you in your homeschooling journey. And today we are gonna talk about homeschooling sixth grade. I'm actually just gonna share with you guys my curriculum picks as well as our entire homeschool plan. For this year, things I want to accomplish in my sixth grader and the resources that we're gonna use to try and get him there. So what I will do is go subject by subject. And I wanna apologize for the echo in this room. I'm in a pretty big room. It's the only place to record right now. And so there's like a lot of echo in here. But let's get into what we're gonna be using for his language arts. I'm actually gonna flip the camera down so you guys can really get a good look at the things that we're gonna be using. So here is the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts Level 6, and it has the course book and the reader. We also have some grammar and geography cards in here that we've been using in the previous years, so they're already separated into pouches. So what Level 6 is focusing on art, geography, grammar usage and punctuation, reading, writing, and literature, and major writing projects. So what I'm liking about this, I will zoom in a little bit more. If you've done the good and the beautiful in the past lessons, there wasn't a lot of writing, but you're getting a lot more writing projects and major writing projects as well in the level six course. And this is basically a checklist of what he's gonna do every day. He's gonna practice his grammar or geography cards. And those basically look like this, is for him to memorize the states that are on each card or the country or the body of water these are the ge geography cards so the grammar cards usually will have a question about grammar and then the answers on the back is to memorize them we're also going to be starting with read out louds still like i have been doing every morning and i will make an another video on the our read out loud selections for this upcoming homeschool year for math, he's going to be using Beast Academy, and I just made a video here on Beast Academy level four, which is for fifth grade, but that is because we are behind. So he is in the middle of it. We're gonna continue to work through that through the summer, and then finish it up, and then jump into level five, which is the last level in Beast Academy. After level five, when he's in seventh grade, he'll be able to work on pre-algebra, leaving him to do algebra in eighth grade and then in high school, he'll be doing geometry. Our Bible time, we are gonna be reading a Proverbs or Psalms a day and be discussing it. But we're also gonna be going through the answers books for kids, which is for ages, I think, oh, it's here, it is six to 12 and he's 11. And there is a companion guide online that has notebooking pages so that as he's going through these questions, he's able to notebook all the answers and get more out of the study. We're also gonna be reading through this book called Grandpa's Box. So this book illustrates the stories of the Bible as a grandfather is sharing different items from his box of things and he's illustrating the stories of the Bible with those things. It also says that it takes children to a deeper understanding of God's plan for redemption told throughout all of scripture. Each chapter emphasizes what we learn about God, not just what we learn about individual characters in the Bible. There is another book that I'm gonna look into called Training Hearts and Teaching Minds that studies Christian doctrine and can teach why we believe what we believe to young children. So I think that at this age in middle school is and the middle school up into the high school years, it's gonna, you know, when the kids were younger, we taught them a lot of the Bible stories and character traits and things like that, which we're still gonna get into. But I also think that at this age, middle school and high school, when kids naturally start questioning things, that it's really important to start teaching them apologetics so that they can understand before they have those questions, why they believe what they believe. We're also going to be going through specific character traits this year from laying down the rails. I also have the companion that has like a really short exercise when you're studying specific traits for you to do every day. And the character traits that we're going to be studying this year for him are, I have it here on my laptop, it's going to be self-control, obedience, respect, reverence, regularity and devotion, personal initiative, managing one's own body, usefulness and integrity. So that's nine character traits if I can get through one a month. 
Um, if not, then we'll just do as many as we can get through in the year. And I also have this one year daily devotion, which is just a page for him to do by himself every morning. He can do this while he's still laying in bed. I really want to get him in the habit of studying the word on his own and really sinking in a lot of truths into him at this age. So for history, I don't have it with me yet, but we're gonna try peaceful press, playful pioneers homeschool curriculum and when I do get it I will show you guys more but it's a literature and project-based history and it's made for elementary students but it is up to age 12 so what I really like about it like I said it's literature and project-based literature like in as in beautiful feet books how they have those living literature books living history books I mean so this has the same type of books um, and it has extensions so I'm going to use that for my first, second grader but also there's there's other books that are more for my sixth graders age that he can use they also have recipes and projects to do which I really think it'll be a lot of fun to and then we're just saying one time period so we were using the good and the beautiful but I really like the idea of focusing on early American history this year. I remember as a kid in school, that was like the most fun time that I had studying it. And we have not been consistent with history. So I think I need to like just focus and buckle down. So this curriculum uses the Little House on the Prairie series as well as the book Theology to tie everything in to teach history from a Christian perspective. But I am also going to have him read as part of his own private reading time some of the books from the Beautiful Feet's Early American History selection for his age. Now we have science. So for science, we're gonna stick with the good and the beautiful sciences. And I do have some of their old science units that are still on the website now that we plan on getting through, but I am going to wait until, because she's uh, the good and the beautiful is remaking their curriculum. So now they have separate student journals and videos and more hands-on projects. So I'm going to share with you the topics that I want to study, but we're going to be waiting till the new ones come out. So the first new one that they have that we're going to be doing is the Simple Machines. So I'm going to do that one. We're going to also do the Dinosaur one. We're also going to be using, for him, the maturation and sexual reproduction. He's moving up into middle school at church and at our homeschool co-op. And not all kids are taught about things in the same way. And some kids are exposed to more things than other kids are. So I want him to be ready in case, God forbid, anything pops up. He will know it from a biblical perspective and hear it from me first. We're going to do arthropods again. We did arthropods when he was little, but I want to do it again with the new version. And I'm going to have him do some of the 7th and 8th grade extensions for all of these units. Towards the end of the school year, probably the last science we're going to do, because he'll be a little bit older, headed towards 12. Oh my gosh, 12. But we'll be doing the beginning chemistry. I also would like to do the human body. I know that they're changing this one, so it's more like a health and human body. Um, so we'll see about the details of that. There's a couple of other units we're going to do, but I haven't figured out exactly which ones. I do want to give him an opportunity to choose for himself what he's interested in. So we can go ahead and purchase those and have him study those as well. For our like electives, we're going to be doing cursive and typing. And what I did in the past was I had him alternate days. So he would do cursive one day, uh, typing a next day because he doesn't like the cursive, but he does enjoy the typing. So I'm going to have him alternate days to make it, to break it up a little bit for him, make it more enjoyable. We're also going to do Spanish. We're going to try out Talkbox Mom's Spanish course. It's not really a course. It's more like a, they give you phrases to use for the month. And during, let's say, during meal times, you're going to be using these phrases and only speaking in Spanish, using the phrases every day until you get them all down packed. And then the next box comes in, you'll be working on that. It might be like bath time or bedtime, incorporating the phrases and not just vocabulary words into your daily living so once we get that i'm going to make a review on that for you as well semesters i want to break up this homeschool year into maybe three semesters where each part of the semester he's doing like a little elective that's different so i'm having a hard time and he's having a hard time figuring out what are the things that he enjoys to do so i want him to try out some new things this year and see if he picks up on any new skills or any new hobbies or any new interests 
And so one of those things we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna have him, I know he hates live classes, but I really want him to try because he's really into Roblox. So, and I really have his screen time limited during the homeschool year especially. But I thought it'd be cool, since he loves it so much, for him to take an out school class on creating his own Roblox games because that can lead to a little side hustle in the future if he gets good at it and he really enjoys it. For the second semester, I've been holding on to this for so many years. It's Ready, Set, Go Green. It's for grades four through five, but it's activities to have the children be more aware of their environment and how to take care of their planet. I think this will be fun for us to do for that second semester just learning how to take care of our planet and doing more things for the environment. Maybe he'll grow to love it and have a career in that, who knows. It's all about exposing our kids to different things because you never know what they're really gonna take to. And then for the third semester, we're gonna try out an instrument. So I'm gonna let him pick an instrument. I think he was leaning towards piano. Um, so we're gonna have him pick an instrument and start some lessons, God willing, <laughs> during that third semester. Now let's talk about some skills that don't have anything to do with curriculum and then I'm going to tell you the co-op classes that he's going to be taking as well. Now there's some skills that kids need to do well when they get into the high school years, whether he's going to be going to a private Christian high school like his older sister did or whether he's going to be homeschooled for high school. Either way, high school years are preparation for college years and middle school is preparing them for high school regardless of where they're going. So there's a couple of things that my daughter who is in high school, in a regular high school now, has told me that she wished that I had done to prepare her better. And number one, that's having deadlines and schedules. So I'm going to try to have, have deadlines for his science projects and his history projects and teach him how to work on a deadline on his own without needing me to constantly be on top of him. I also want him to work with a planner that I still haven't bought for him yet, but I do want him to schedule out his days. I'm gonna start it out by the second semester. I'm gonna have him start to schedule out his own days and have him be responsible for his work every day. We also, we don't have tests or anything like that in our, in our homeschool. And I know that my daughter struggled with learning how to study. And so I am going to have to figure that one out maybe create at the end of the unit science or history test for him to study for and uh, maybe teach him how to take notes. I know that doing the Bible things like for the answers that I showed you, getting those notebooking pages is going to teach them how to make, how to take notes and I'm going to have some video courses on how to take notes and study for tests and tips and stuff like that. I want him to come to class prepared. He has to have my laptop charged. I have to get him one but I want him to make sure it's charged so he needs it for math. I want to make sure that he has all of his books and all of his supplies that he's getting it and I'm not getting it for him. I want to push more independence on him this homeschool year. So the last thing I wanna share what we're doing for the social aspect of homeschooling and other electives and things that he's gonna be taking and doing. So we have three things that have with, I guess you can count them as four things other places that we'll be going to for him to meet up with friends and, and be around kids his own age group range you know like all of middle school and all of middle and high school actually but so number one that's church on Sundays we go to church on Sundays and he'll actually not think about it, it's only three because when he moves up in church on Sundays he'll be sitting with mama but he does have church on Wednesday night he's gonna be moving up into the middle and high school group and so he'll have that every Wednesday so that'd be nice for him to have he already started over the summer the other home the other thing we have is one of our homeschool co-ops has it's just for like I used to call them play dates but now it's like tween gatherings <laughs> and field trips so we're gonna be having we're gonna try and go like to all the field trips for this homeschool co-op but then once a month he has a middle school like just like a hangout time with the middle school kids so over this summer I'm trying to connect him with some of those kids now so that when he does go into the group he has like strong friendships there and then the last thing is our other homeschool co-op that we go to weekly and that one has classes he's gonna be taking PE Odyssey of the Mind, which is like a hands-on thing where you get a you get a, a objective and some objects and you have to create something with your team. So you're learning how to work in a team. You're also learning how to speak and explain what it is that you're doing. And then he's also gonna do Lego Club because he really likes Legos and I thought it'd be just something fun for him to do. And there's an options, there's options for him to take two more classes. So if he right now he's gonna have that free time to hang out with his friends who have free periods, um, unless he wants to try a new class, then we'll pick up on that. So that is it. I'm like that is it. I just told you like a hundred things I was doing, but those are the 
that's my whole, entire homeschool plan for sixth grade. Now, in the middle of the homeschool year, or maybe after every semester, I want to do a check-in, and I'm going to write down some homeschool goals, which I will share with you in another video. But we're going to check in every few months, every trimester, I guess, and we're going to see if I am hitting my goals, if I need to adjust my goals, if I'm... Uh, continuing with the plan or what things need to be changed and what things are working well and I'm gonna make a video for you guys every time Lord willing so I just want to thank you for watching and I will be making a video on my second graders entire homeschool plan in case you have younger students and you want to get some ideas for that so thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in the next video